नमस्ते प्रणाम दाध्यान ओ पार्थाय प्रतिबोधिता भगवता नारायणन स्वयं व्यास ग्रथिता पुराण मुनिना मध्य महाभारत अद्वैतामृतवर्षिणी भगवती अष्टादशाध्यायि मनुसंदधा भगवदीतेषिणी भगवदगीता विथ विच लॉर्ड नारायण हिमसेल्फ गेव एनलाइटनमेंट टू अर्जुन द एंशंट सेज व्यास इंक्लूडेड इट इन द महाभारत ओ गॉडेस शॉवर ऑफ द नेक्टर लाइक नॉलेज ऑफ नॉन डिजम कंटेंट इन योर एटीन चैप्टर्स ओ माई अफेक्शनेट मदर डिस्ट्रॉयर ऑफ रीबर्थ आई मेडिटेट अपॉन दी वसुदेवसुत देव कंस चाणूर मर्दनम देवकी परमानंदम कृष्ण वंदे जगत सन ऑफ वसुदेव स्लेयर ऑफ कंस एंड चाणूर एक्सट्रीम डिलाइट फॉर मदर देवकी ओ लॉर्ड कृष्ण सुप्रीम टीचर ऑफ द यूनिवर्स माय सैल्यूटेशन टू यू Sanyasa Yoga, fifth adhyay, and Sri Krishna telling us in this seventh shloka about the <coughs> way a person who works for others, not for oneself. And because in the previous shloka, in the sixth shloka, Sri Krishna has uh, told told us that renouncing work is extremely difficult. and it is only when one starts working in a selfless manner when one takes up the path of performing actions he can reach the brahman without any delay quickly that person can reach uh, the 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 ultimate realization by performing the karma and by performing the karma in the selfless manner gains the knowledge and then he can get into that stage of sanyasa which is extremely difficult so first do the karma and now shri krishna in this uh, seventh chapter uh, seventh shloka he is going to tell us yoga yukto vishuddhatma vijitatma jitendriya ownership of doing the not not with the attitude that I am the doer. Just whichever work has fallen to your lot, start performing it sincerely, wholeheartedly, dedicatedly. knowing well is the lord's work and what happens while doing this lord work yoga yukto vishuddhatma having purified the mind by such doing such type of karma yoga yukto vishuddhatma by doing this work in this spirit of selflessness having the mind purified what happens जितेन्द्रियंद्रियंद्रियंद्रियंद्रियंद्रियंद्रियंद्रियंद्रियंद्रियंद्रियंद्रियंद्रियंद्रियंद्रियंद्रियंद्रियंद्रियंद्रियं
uh, one who is devoted to the path of action and the purified mind. How can one get a purified mind? By way of Vijitatma Jitendriyaha. By controlling the self. But the one who has attained this purification, stage of purification, Yoga Yukta Vishuddhatma, by performing such selfless karma, having attained that level of purity by understanding the self, who has conquered the self and Jitendriyaha and has conquered the senses. Sarva Bhutatma Bhutatma Kurvan Napi Sarva Bhutatma Bhutatma Perceiving or realizing the self in all the selves, in the self of all the beings, that is the feeling of oneness with everyone, the, the universal feeling of universal love that becomes, that I start perceiving everyone filled with the Brahm consciousness of the Brahman. That which is in me is also in others. And that stage, that is the stage of ultimate realization. Sarva Bhutatma Bhutatma Kurvan Api Nalipyate. When that stage comes, then though acting, Kurvan Api, although he is acting, although that person is immersed in so many activities, Nalipyate. None of those activities, they bind him. None of these activities, no, he doesn't get tainted by any of those activities. He doesn't get affected by any of these activ those activities. He, no, 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 no activity can uh, be harmful by him. No activity can be uh, 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 can paint that person. No bad marks, no blemishes, even if he is engrossed in doing all those activities. With the mind purified by Karma Yoga and the self-disciplined and the senses subdued, one who realizes one's self in the self of all beings, though acting, is not affected, is not tainted, it doesn't become the culprit of the performance of that, that action. There is a contrast between the earthbound man engaging himself in action and the soul liberating karma yogi doing so. A person who is doing the karma with full eye consciousness, I am the doer, I am doing, there is a great amount of difference between such a person who is immersed in his aham, and with the understanding that I am the doer is totally in contrast with the person who has given up his eye. Like uh, in the previous shloka that uh, we uh, discussed, Sri Ramakrishna says, Pit, convert that ripe ego to, unripe ego to, ripe ego. The ripe ego of a child, the ripe ego of a servant, the ripe ego of a devotee. Then, work that we do, that will be, that will have totally different uh, angle, that will have totally different uh, uh, results for that matter. Bondage increases in the former, doing work with high consciousness. But there is no bondage when we start doing the work with the understanding that I am just an instrument in the hands of the Lord. What kind of bondage then? What kind of attachment, what kind of uh, uh, <coughs> binding there for them? There is no binding. The action of the yogi not being motivated by any desire, his understanding gets progressively clarified. And as a person starts working in this manner of getting rid of my consciousness, getting, doing, starts doing the work with the spirit of, I am not a doer, automatically greater and greater knowledge starts dawning on him and 
ultimately he reaches, he starts realizing that there is no difference me and that you know, lowly, lowliest of lowly creature. That is also the, 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 uh, the, the e e even a small animal also is the manifestation of that eternal Brahman, of that Satchidananda. And when that stage comes, we don't work for ourselves then. And then whatever we do is for the betterment of all the beings, Sarva Bhuta. As his desires in all forms get liquidated, his self-control tends to perfection. Now there is no desire then. There is no desire, there is no aspiration. Aspiration is only betterment of all. That is the only desire. The desire is only to attain the Brahma Jnana. That becomes the only desire. Desire is only to do my work as best as I can. Being an instrument in the hands of the Lord. That is the only desire. Desirelessness in him gets transformed into the clarity of understanding. The, the moment a, a person becomes desireless, a, pers a person starts working without the I consciousness, without the selfish motive. All the confusions which are covering the mind, all the veils, all the delusions that are covering the mind, they just get wiped out. The veil gets removed and the teacher becomes so clear. Who am I? What am I doing? Why am I doing? Why am I performing this action? Why am I performing this work? Everything becomes absolutely clear. There is no delusion. There is no confusion. And there is a total clarity. When this clarity sets in, Automatically, the knowledge starts dawning upon a person. The veil of ignorance starts getting lifted and the knowledge shines forth. Karma Yoga itself is Karma Sannyasa because it brings in these successive stages of spiritual enlightenment. Then the Karma Yoga itself becomes sannyasa. You don't have to put in any extra, extra effort. But that will happen only when you, we keep on doing the karma. Not by running away from doing the karma. Not by escaping the way Arjuna has escaped from waging this war. And on this uh, particular uh, uh, shloka of Yoga Yukto Vishuddhatma Vijitatma Jitendriyaha Sri Ramakrishna's teaching uh, he fits with this particular uh, teaching of Sri Krishna. Sri Ramakrishna says, An individual has the delusion of I am the doer. That is what normally happens. I am doing it. You know, we, we, we get so much pride. I have done this. I have secured first class. I have given appointment. I have given employment to hundreds of people. I, 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 I. So, Individual has the delusion of I am the doer. As long as the philosopher's stone has not converted the base metal of his mind into the noble one of the divine eye. What philosopher's stone does? Touch an ordinary iron or any ordinary metal with that philosopher's stone, it gets converted into a lustring golden sword. Hmm. That's what philosopher's stone does. It's a, a, I mean, it's a hearsay. It is the quality of philosopher's stone. And what Sri Ramakrishna says that the philosopher's stone, the ultimate knowledge coming to a person, the ultimate realization, it changes the base metal of this mind, the lowly nature of this mind, the mind which is focused on I consciousness, that philosopher's stone, that ultimate knowledge, that Brahma Jnana, it will just convert this lowly mind with I consciousness into a noble one with the divine I. Brahma Jnana will just get rid of the I consciousness and then what happens? Then comes, he opens the divine eye of the person. Then one starts seeing the 
all the universe, all the creation has nothing but the manifestation of Brahman. Then is the real mingling, then is the real marriage of the self and the creation and all the selves. Then there is a realization of what is there in me is in all other beings. Sarva Bhutatma Bhutatma. And he is in ignorance. He entertains the feelings of agency such as I am the doer of the virtuous acts. That is all ignorance. Or I am the doer of this vicious act. Or, any, or even if someone does something very bad, he will have that feeling, I have done it. Oh my God, I have done that uh, such, such a great sin. I have done that heinous act. But who is he? Who am I? Hmm. This attitude is the cause of continuation of the wheel of birth and death. Till the time the I consciousness lingers on. This Jivatma, even after giving up this body, there won't be any liberation. There will be millions and millions of cycles of birth and death till the ultimate realization happens. But when one realizes God, now remember, just uh, listen to these words of Sri Ramakrishna. But when one realizes God, one is freed from the feelings of agency and bondage. And we realize the God. There is no more I am the doer. There is no more I have done this virtuous act. There is no more oh my God, I have done this vicious act. No, that I consciousness has gone once one realizes God. One remains convinced in the truth that God is the real doer of everything. And when that stage comes, that stage comes, it leads to renouncing the world. Then comes the stage of renunciation. That is the ultimate, you know, end point. But that end point will come only doing the work. That last stage of karma sannyasa will only come after performing the karma yoga and not before that. So, Sri Krishna says that karma sannyasa is extremely difficult. It is not that you just you keep on you say ten times I have renounced, I have renounced, I have renounced and you renounce the work. No, it doesn't happen. Rather, do activities with selfless attitude. Do hundred activities without any eye consciousness, without feeling I am doing. Do hundreds of quantity activities. Get involved in as much as many activities as you have to do. Get involved. Do it. And then a stage will come when you will lead to the stage of Sanyasa. So that is uh, the seventh shloka that uh, Sri Krishna has taught us that having subdued the self, having subdued the senses, when one does the work with full determination, by purifying oneself, Vishuddhatma Yoga Yukto and Jitatma Jitendriya, then the stage comes that the person starts seeing the self in all the selves and then no amount of work, no type of work can take that person. That is the key of doing the work. Not getting tempted, not getting bound, not getting attached by the work. So with that, uh, uh, we complete this uh, seventh uh, uh, shloka reading of the Sanyasa Yoga, the fifth Adhyay of Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Shri Krishna Arpanamahatu. Jai Shri Ramakrishna. Jai Thakur Jai Maha. Jai Swam.